Hey everybody, got a question today about God and why we don't gravitate towards Him. It's all about respect. Why don't we have respect for God? We live our lives and we try to think of this God, but we quickly lose respect for God. You know, um, respect is vital in relationships. They say once respect is lost in a marriage or a relationship, the relationship is in serious trouble and needs intervention counseling to restore respect. Why don't we respect God? Well, we have misconceived ideas of who God is based upon many different uh, resources. So that's, I mean, that's a broad <laughs> brush, a broad statement to make. I, I readily admit that. But we live in a world where we're educated to the point where we are conditioned not to know anything for sure. In fact, when I've said this before, when I was going through school, across the board, many different fields of study, the word, it is contingent, was put forth as the analytical framework to any um, subject we were studying, whether it would be sociology, psychology, um, what have you. So where does that leave us? We le we're left with people who don't have convictions. Our convictions have, n have not been instilled or they've been seared or they've been challenged by powerful strongholds who have altered truth in the name of education. You know, just today, Philip Johnson died. Um, I have a couple of his books, actually, over the weekend. And he, he's a University of Berkeley professor. He wrote a great book called um, Defeating Darwinism. Darwinism is taught as fact. It's not fact. It's a lie. But there are powerful people who are teaching it as fact. In fact, they're not even allowed to examine creationism in... in uh, as professors, so that, that by death you are brainwashed, you're being channeled, mind controlled, you know, I mean, uh, unfortunately it's just not <laughs> in this isolated example, it's this avalanche of, bo of, of baloney out there that's teaching evolution as truth. It shouldn't be taught as fact. It doesn't even qualify as a theory. Never mind um, being taught as fact. So it's funny because Philip Johnson in the book, he just passed away. I've seen him speak at Park Street Church about 1990. Sorry, I'll say 2001. 2002, maybe, between 98 and, I would say 2000 to 2002, he, he spoke there. But he had this great te teaching. He talked about analytical framework. In the book, Defeating Darwinism, which he says, everyone, whenever evolution, creationism is brought, creationism is brought up, takes the role in the movie, Inherit the Wind, which came out. Uh, years after the Scopes trial, and that is the dominant. That is the dominant influence of evolution today. It is this this movie that came out, Inherit the Wind? It's a marking of creationism. Despite the fact, in the golden age of archaeology, in the last hundred fifty years. 
It has disproven Darwinism. And the fossil record should have, you know, many, many examples of transitional life forms, but we don't see it. In fact, um, the Piltdown Man was taught as fact for 40, as the missing link for 40 years. And it was proven as a fraud in 1953. In the meantime, you had all this evolutionary thought that led to World War I, World War II, you know, the communists killing all the people in China and Russia. Um, and all these doctorates were written based on the Piltdown Man, and it shaped, you can make the argument that it shaped a liberal progressive education. You know, talk about walking the plank. Um, and it was proven once you're out there, <laughs> and it's it's you know it's too late. You know, it's all about cashing your check. I mean, you you're already you know these they're all walked away from God. Um, you know, Amherst was put forth to balance Harvard. They turned their back on God, and they went liberal. But it's all based on these lies uh, of of. Um, so what I'm trying to say is we're inundated with, um, and, and Philip Johnson just happened to die over the weekend. And I don't know. If, <coughs> actually, I do have the book right here, "Defeating Darwinism." You know, very thin volume. Very thin volume. I was talking about the baloney that goes out there, but speaking of baloney, he talks about one of the frameworks, Philip Johnson, here's his name, Philip Johnson, Defeating Darwinism by Opening Minds. An easy to understand guy for, right? Very easy to understand. It's a great book. <laughs> it's a great a primer to a primer. You know, Darwin had his doubts himself. He said the human eye itself can blow away his his theory. <laughs> it wasn't even a theory. It doesn't qualify as a theory. But getting back to one of the things he says is we have to have a baloney detector as educated people to um, ascertain right from wrong and truth. And f so even today, I'm listening on the radio today Story after story after story after story after story are coming from this one radio station, a new big news station in town, about the um, dramatic need for to do something for global warming. And you can make the argument, and I mean, I guess a, a 10,000 scientists <laughs> signed some document today or yesterday, but you can make the argument that it, it's it's just an agenda for for control and power based on lies and these people are either deceived or they're deliberately trying to go lust for this power to control people and to play god i mean i even heard somebody on the radio said it's it's about time we play god and what that was one of the comments today on wbz radio today the news program you know and they come out in there promos and they say now more than ever you know you need to know the truth you know uh, it's it's like in other words we're not fake news right but they, all they do is beat the drum story after story today I heard like four stories in a row about uh, the fraud of global warming so you need to have a baloney detector and and this is what Philip Johnson's also ta was talking about is to be able to determine truth. And that's why we don't respect God, because we've been infiltrated by the enemies of God, who are, you know, the gods of this age, the God of this age, Satan and his demons. He's defeated, but he's trying to take down everybody he can. 
And um, it's very simple. You just got to believe and you're saved, right? And <laughs> you cross over from death to life. But Satan doesn't want you to know that it's a very simple uh, sal salvation message. So he's, he's <clears throat> obscuring the message. Even churches don't teach this. They end up teaching that plus, plus, plus. And, and they'll even say it's faith alone. And then it, here comes the double talk or what you see in practice. And you just talk to the people in the pews and they have no sense of uh, security. They, they don't have that joy. You know. <clears throat> so my message today is about respecting God. And why don't we respect God? And that's a key thing for the millenniums, the snowflakes, anybody. They have to get to the point where they see and get the right information. And the last thing they're going to read is the Bible. <laughs> and they've been trained very well not to read the Bible. It's more than training. They've been conditioned. You step over that line, you're going to get hit. You know, you're going to be called a name. You know, but what does the Bible say? We're all fallen, and we just need to believe, and we're saved, okay? And we live forever, for free. I mean, what are the costs of doing all this global warming, um, green activism, completely experimenting? I mean, talk about dealing from weakness. They're going to just throw bad money after bad trying to, you know, put out a a, a fire with a, a squirt gun, right? You know, one of those California fires with a squirt gun. But if you want, uh, I very, I just, this gentleman who just passed away, I'd check out his book, Defeating Darwinism, today. Uh, you can get it online. Very easy way to understand um, the whole debate and why it's important to see that we have been, you know, lied to. And this is how we're lied to. I mean, before fake news, okay, this book was 20, 25 years ago. It came out. And he's talking right here. He says, you got to get your baloney detector out to fight the fake news. Okay, 1997, 22 years ago. You have to have that baloney detector out to fight the fake news. And look at that news report today. I'm listening, right? And I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. And they get the nice, happy, friendly voices and the news reports. And they're out there, you know, doing their job researching and everything. <laughs> What's that thing in the background? I got a lamp on top of a lamp. <laughs> well, they're not turned on, I mean. Um... I love those lamps, so they're very nice. But what I wanted to find, get to at the uh, another thing here is what he says is that, in, related to that news program, is we get our news from the source, and whoever owns the microphone is the source you're going to be getting from. So whatever their agenda is, they're going to present it and package it and roll it out to you. You know, it's all in the packaging. And you, you end up, and, and they are the, you know, here's another little twist. This is something I came up with. They're really, TV, media, radio, the image, conscious American public, we like to align ourselves what we see is being glorified by the chief glorifier, which is TV, media, and radio. So we end up... Um, taking on these characteristics, right? And before we know it, we're sucked in and we just want to be loved by the Hollywood TV, radio, right? Plus it matches a lot of us sexual mores. You know, finally, you know, <laughs> that's a good way. So let me just finish that point and then we'll go on to the sexual mores and then I'll wrap it up. But uh, whoever owns this microphone is in their agenda is the most powerful, powerful person. So 
you have to own that microphone. And you see with cable and YouTube, you see channels out there where people are getting a healthier message out, which has two sides to the story, or at least presents the creation side, right? And um, getting back to what I wanted to say is that, you know, Thomas Huxley, the bulldog of Darwin, and, and this is regarding sexual mores, you would think that, you know, he was the spokesman for Darwin. He came, you know, and they so readily were willing to accept Darwinism back in the, you know, 19th century when it was popularized. Why? Why did it become so popular? Be because Huxley himself said, who was Darwin's bulldog, not that there was a preponderance of evidence. There is no evidence, all right? It's improvable. But it matched and it excused their sexual mores or lack thereof. And it gave them an excuse to go out and try to li live a carefree life. And that's a real reason why Darwinism was adopted by the scientific community. And that's why it's being taught today because it got that foothold and it just snowballed. And it gives man today an excuse to hide from God. And you know, that's what Adam was doing originally. But we, he was right hiding from God. But God came after him, called him out. You know, and Adam fell. He fell. And we're all inherited. We're, we're all guilty because of the sin of Adam. It's really not our fault. I got good news here for you. All right? It's really not our fault. But we're on the hook because of the sin of one man. But we got Jesus, who was the second Adam, who did not sin. He went to that cross. And he, 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 he took, he made amends for Adam's sin. And he made a way to heaven because because of what he did, he becomes our proxy. And once we believe, which is a supernatural event, we cross over from death to life. Got these churches out here teaching this quote-unquote repentance. They don't even know what the word means. Repentance means think again about who God is. Not about clean up all your whole life and everything. I got real good news for you today. Just believe and be saved. And you'll live forever. You got God's word on that. Don't let these churches, 99% of them, are teaching a false definition. They're, they're not teaching the gospel. The gospel is you believe what you hear and you're saved. Just like the thief on the cross who hung on that cross. He says, remember me, Jesus, when you come into your kingdom. He didn't clean up his life. He was just hanging on a cross. Jesus says, turn to him. Today you'll be with me in paradise. That's it, sports fans. That's it. I'm going to cut this short. I think you got my message. But we've been lied to, and that has led us to a point where we do not respect God. But God can be respected and loved, and you can cultivate a relationship, you can nurture your environment with God. You can feel his presence, as a friend of mine just was explaining to me, and I, I'm right there with her. She was, you know, preaching to me when we, I, um, I did some traveling, met some people, but... You know, God is there. He's there. You know, lead us, guide us. Psalm 31, verse um, 3. Read that. You're guaranteed salvation. I've said this many times. You know, Romans 4, 16. Ephesians 1, 14. Hebrews 7, 22. These are guarantees from God. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit the moment you believe. Scales of eyes come off you, right? And our sins cannot be held against us anymore. It says that. I believe in Corinthians, but you know, also in Corinthians, Second Corinthians uh, one verse twenty two also talks about the guarantee of salvation. See the now you can respect God, he's guarantee of salvation. You turn around and made it free. We can worship a God like that. He's that's what we need, otherwise we don't get in. So now you can start having building blocks of respect for God based upon your belief. You're being born again. You know, Kanye West just got born again. He's excited. It's so great to see somebody get excited. I hope he, he'll become a cult cultural, um, uh, what do you call it? <laughs> 
you know, have an, an, an impact in, in the culture. But So that's what we got today is a, a great message of, of how we can get respect for God, where that comes from, and how to see we've been lied to. You know, it, it's happened in many ways. And, you know, the lies are coming as angels of light. They, they're coming, they're fooling us. And we want to be glorified by that angel of light because that's all we know, right? But man, it's without excuse. God makes himself readily available as the nose on your face, all right? But so don't, don't try to become glorified by these other entities that Satan has put out there, these you know, uh, fake gods, you know, the TV, the radio, they're creating this, um, what, you know, road to go down where you become glorified by them. You start believing in all these anti-God positions just to be loved by them. They, they are glorifying you, but it's meaningless. That love won't last. You need eternal love. It was purchased on the cross. You can stand with God and live forever for free. You have a new body, just like Christ did. Philippians 3, read that. The end of Philippians 3. Um, I also wanted to say 2 Corinthians 5, verse 5 is another place where you can see that salvation is guaranteed. So the Bible, the Word of God is life. You can trust that it came from God. You can look at somebody like Alexander the Great, who's a non-biblical character, most people would say, but he, God used him to provide an objective benchmark to show that the Bible had to come from God because, and Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies that, you know, Alexander the Great had translated to Greek 300 years before Christ came. And there's many, many prophecies he fulfilled. You know, Simon Greenleaf, who built Tower of Law, he wrote a great book called The Testimony of Evangelists. You gotta read this. These are, these are things that are being swept under the rug right now. But these are the, the true true evidences for Christ. That, you know, Harvard Law, the Royal Law Professor of Harvard Law, uh, um, Simon Greenleaf, he, 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 <laughs> he, he's, he says that you can, in any U.S. court, prove the resurrection with eyewitness testimony. Right. Take it from him. Don't take it from me. Read that book, The Testimony of the Evangelist. And get back to me. All right. So that's what I got for you today. Uh, respect is very important. Is <laughs> and it's all being clouded. And the more we take in, with the, the more we think we're winning. But you got to have your baloney detector out to eliminate all this baloney that's coming at you even though it sounds great it makes you feel great you get the music playing and you know in the on the on the television commercial it play, plays at your strings it's all there to design to manipulate you and then the the photography the cinematography of every commercial is designed for a reason you know pre-thought thoughts are everything's designed to create an effect uh, you, you can read John Gotti's work on that, uh, Dumbing Us Down. He was a New York State Teacher of the Year, 1992. And he tried to sabotage the system. He ends up becoming Teacher of the Year. Then he, he wrote about what the problems are. The, the educational system is designed for the teachers and the administrators and not designed for the children at all. They're the last concern. The ch children are taken for granted and they're played big time. All right, so that's my message today, and I hope we can talk again. Leave a message in the elephant of the room. <laughs> Elephants are plenty. Hope you like my message today. Leave a comment, subscribe, hit the subscribe button, hit that little bell on my YouTube channel, and um, leave a comment. And I wanted to make this video for a long time about respect, and it just, I just, Started talking right now. I was ready to, you know, do something else. And I, then I remembered this fellow just passed away uh, over the weekend. So that came in handy. Defeating Darwinism. Get that book. All right. All right. I'm gonna sign off now. Want to wish you a great day. Bye bye.